Hi there, welcome to Kali and the Gardener. I am transplanting my pepper plants today and this has been an eight week process for us from germination to transplantation now. And the great thing is I did them in these Burpee XL start pots and they were super easy. They're great because they can contain the plant from starting germination all the way eight weeks till it's time to transplant. So it cut out a huge step that can cause so much frustration when you have to take those small starts and transplant them into pea pods. There's none of that there. I can keep track of what I'm growing because I can put in nice huge labels and I can easily transplant them, which really the less you can fuss with the plant, the better, the less risk of transplantation shock. And this is the most stressful time for that. Another thing I love about these burpee trays are they have silicone. They're made of plastic and silicone. So it's really easy for me to pop out those trays. And even at eight weeks, we don't have any root systems really growing out from the bottom. So less root damage when we're removing them. They were able to contain these peppers for quite a while. So that is my first key towards growing any type of, type of plant from seed. I grow tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, tomatillos, lots of things I start from this. And when I'm succession growing, when I'm growing again for plants that might fade later in the summer, I start again and again from these trays. So that is key for me, starting with these Burpee XL trays. But let's talk about the start of this video. These are the peppers I started and it's a huge variety. I got the seeds from Baker Creek Seeds, rareseeds.com. I'll have the link for you below. And I grow a variety of hot peppers, sweet peppers, and we're eating them plain and pickled and filled with cheese, all sorts of things throughout the season. They're one of my favorite things in the garden. Oh, we're getting a relief from the sunshine right now. When I started these peppers, I started them about eight weeks ago, like I mentioned. And one that gave me plenty of time to see if I had to restart something because it wasn't growing the way it should. But it also gives me plenty of time for these plants to get established and large enough. And we really need to wait till Mother's Day, essentially, for things to be warm enough in central Washington to feel comfortable planting peppers and tomatoes, eggplants, tomatillos outside because we have really chilly nights sometimes even though the days are pretty warm so i've also been hardening off these plants as they've been getting larger when we started them at seed i started them on a grow mat they were really warm and at a constant temperature then i grew them inside under grow lights to make sure that they were growing beautifully and strong but about a week ago, a week and a half ago, it was time to start hardening them off. The temperature was getting warm really quickly. It was getting very sunny and those were keys to me. It was time to get them outside. So I started the first day just a few hours in a shaded spot. Then it was a few hours more. Then we took them into a sunnier location and then slowly, slowly they were out all day and then all night. I wasn't taking them back and forth to my garage where it was warm at night. And what you may notice those first few days of hardening off, especially if it's really sunny outside like it is today, is that the sun may scorch the leaves. It may burn the leaves just a little bit. But overall, the plants did really well. And that is going to help really decrease our risk of transplantation shock because there's nothing worse than making a two month investment in something and then it just perishes as soon as you put it in the ground. The other important thing is I have added a nitrogen bath to them while they were outside. When they were seedlings, I was pouring gelatin. I have a short I can include below, the link below, but I put fish emulsion on these seedlings here to really add a boost of nitrogen and green up the leaves because when we started them in the soil it was a mixture of seedling starred and worm compost but there wasn't much nutrients that could cause leaf or seedling burnage and so we needed to continue fertilizing. Now I don't want to continue fertilizing with nitrogen only. I want to create more of a balance as we move further into the season because too much nitrogen is going to cause a lot of plant growth, a lot of seed growth, but that's not what we're looking for here. In peppers, we want flowers and fruit to grow, obviously, in addition to the plant. There's nothing worse than growing a really tall, beautiful green plant and you get nothing to show for it. Today, I'm going to do my 
final nitrogen bath with that fish emulsion mixed in my watering container and just pour it over the leaves and the plant. And that's also gonna help protect against transplantation shock. As well as I've made sure that my ground is super wet with the micro sprinklers earlier today. And then because it's windy as I'm planting, if I notice it's dry, I have my hose over there and I'm making sure that the ground is really wet and that the seedlings themselves are really moist. You always want to make sure whether you buy a seedling or you're planting a seedling that it in its cell or pot is really moist before you put it into the ground. And then there's nothing worse than planting something in really dry ground. You would not want to be the plant being planted there. And so I certainly try and keep that in mind. I try and keep it the same environment of what we're planting, which is moist to moist. And I want to continue checking throughout the day and days to come that the micro sprinklers I have are keeping the ground saturated with moisture in an even way, not too much and not too little. The other thing you want to continue watching as your seedlings grow and develop is that those micro sprinklers, this is a tongue twister, aren't blocked by new leaf formation. So that might mean me moving them around or adding more sprinklers if I don't feel like they're getting the ground soaked enough throughout the day. Our temperatures here can rise. I think Monday it's supposed to be in the 90s and then we can get up to the mid hundreds, 17, 15 range and that's really really hot for these plants so we want to make sure that they stay moist it might mean you know me coming out with a hose and adding supplementary water or watering them you know in cycle with everything for a longer period of time to super saturate them in the morning when I do water them so that it will keep them moist throughout the day so you need to nurse these little guys until they are fully grown and established. And then usually that's a good sign things are headed in the right direction. You've done everything right. So the soil is equally as important for the growth of our peppers. And because I grow these peppers in the same spot year after year, they can have depletion of nutrients as well as disease may be left in the ground from the previous year. So there are a few things I do. First, in fall, right before the plants start to become too wet or develop a fungus, I immediately pull them out of the ground. That really reduces the risk of any sort of infection developing, such as blight or any sort of black spot that may get into the ground, and those spores can last year after year. So I bring in soil to put on top of this to add as an amendment. So I've mixed in four-way from my local gravel supply area. I bring it in in my car. It's like one cubic yard. It's a ton of dirt and it's four-way. So it includes soil, compost, manure, and mulch. And all of those things are gonna work really well to provide nutrients for the dirt. As well as I worked in all of the thatching that went on, that grass, the leaf clippings from last fall, over and over and over again into this dirt. So it's really soft and plenty of aeration for those roots to continue to grow. So a lot of the nutrients was put back into the soil. The final way in which I'm really going to boost this soil is companion planting. And I am going to do that with beans. I did that last year as well. They're gonna add nitrogen and also just greenery as I take them down to work back into the soil, but they're great and they work well together. So that's making the most of a tight space. They'll interweave in, provide nice mulching for these plants as they start to grow. And it's just something to eat that complements the peppers to have some beans, uh, green beans or tiger beans, all sorts of beans work really well in this area. So I'm mainly gonna stick to bush bean variety. I don't want them to overtake the pepper and shade them out or compete with them. So we'll stick to that variety and just try a whole bunch of different things. It worked really well last year. Okay. So let's get to planting. I have these pepper plants and like I said, the silicone base here is super great. It's wonderful to just pop these suckers out. No root damage. And you can see in eight weeks, we did great. We're not root bound. They had plenty of room to grow. And now it's time to get them into the soil. I grow with two different systems in my pepper area and part of that has to do with space and the other part has to do with supply and so i got these blue tomato cages super cheap one year and i just bought them out from a place going out of business 
but I obviously grow um, peppers in a huge quantity and I didn't have enough despite how much I bought. I grow also using these stakes. They don't grow super huge or crazy and I have put the cages on each side so if the plant in the center starts to take over it still has plenty of support from the side cages. But I just plant in my pepper plant and I like to plant it in deeply kind of like tomatoes. I think it gives the plant more support. It also may enable some more root formation to occur. Tomatoes you definitely want to plant super deep. And the soil is super moist and super soft. And we'll just put it in. If it has a lean to it, I try to make sure it's leaning towards the stake or the cage for support. And just gently tap it into place. And then don't forget, you want to keep track of what you're growing. So make sure you leave in your little tag there. And that's it. So I'll take you through the next steps as I get to planting all the plants, adding that nitrogen back with the fish emulsion, super easy to do. And then it's just a matter of time and patience letting things grow to production. Okay, I wanted to show you what it looks like midway through the process. We are done planting our pepper plants. That's a tongue twister for sure. There are 51 pepper plants in this tight space here. And even though it looks really tight, they each have about a foot of space between them. I used a mixture of tomato cages there. They're not going to outgrow those cages and then also tomato steaks. And I still have a pathway. It's going to get tight as the season goes on to get through to harvest those peppers and beans that will be growing in between. I also moved some of my onions from my growing potato area that were a little too close to the potatoes and would get crushed as we were hilling up on them. So we moved those over and they're going to be perfect companions for those pepper plants. So what we still have left to do. It is windy here today. It is hot here today. And even though I have been watering and watering each time we planted a plant and the soil feels moist to the touch, it's going to dry out and desiccate pretty quickly. What I have realized is that my irrigation is just not equipped to handle this design of pepper planting. It worked well last year, but we are planting in a little different angle and I'm gonna have to add more micro sprinklers into the area, which is not a big deal. We will just run those lines and then I'm going to run the irrigation, not only to soak the soil in deep, but also to make sure that they are doing really well and getting all of the areas we want irrigated. The other thing I'm going to do after I get that all set up and ready to go is plant our companion plants. We've already planted the onions, but beans do really well with the peppers. They will add nitrogen to the soil. And I'm going to be planting bush beans, green bean bush beans, because they're not going to overtake or drown out those pepper plants. And they'll do really well as the season grows on, producing another thing that we can eat and harvest from this bed. They're also going to work to crowd out any weeds that are going to be growing here because it was pretty grassy when I first started working in the leaves at the beginning of the season and adding the dirt. And I want to make sure that any of those grass roots that might be taking over some grass seed in the back that might find a way to get into the soil is drowned out as well as I have some butternut squash growing in this area here. It's starting to pop up. And even though it's dwarf butternut squash, I fully anticipate it's going to enter this bed and create a living mulch situation. It's gonna work really well together. So we have lots of layers here. I'm of course gonna be planting flowers. Marigolds are gonna do wonderfully in this area, drawing in pollinators, keeping the bad bugs away. But this bed is just gonna to continue to grow and grow and grow. And our final step, of course, whenever I transplant anything in my garden, I add a mixture of fish emulsion with my watering container and then just water it, all the leaves, everything. I'm not going to lie. It's a very special smell to end on and you may draw some flies to your area. But it's a one shot when you transplant. I've done it once before when these guys were seedlings and I was hardening them off. But 
I want them to start off with their best leaf production, their best plant production. And the only way I'm going to do that is by adding a shot of nitrogen to them. And that fish emulsion is really the best way to do it. I just add a cap full of that to my watering bucket, water everything, come back, fill up, redo, repeat until all of them are watered nicely and fertilized nicely deep down. It is going to do great. We'll continue to check on them throughout the weeks show you how they're growing in small shorts. And when we get done, I just can't wait to show you how we use those peppers because I have a great pickling recipe that is just delicious and we use it as a condiment all throughout the year. It, it stays lovely um, when we can it. All right, keep watching.